Good morning, morning stars. Good to see you this morning. God is certainly in the blessing business uh, for bringing us here another time and giving us another opportunity. Uh, we certainly bless God for your presence. Uh, we're looking forward to an exciting day, an exciting week uh, in the Lord, and he just continues to keep on blessing us, and we are very, very grateful for it. Uh, I'm going to start us off with a word of prayer, uh, after which I will ask you to unmute yourselves and just say hello, uh, and then we will get going with the rest of service. Let us bow. Father in heaven, uh, God, we come just a few of your humble servants acknowledging and realizing that your grace is truly amazing. Your mercy, God, is brand new and fresh each and every morning. Father, we thank you for the opportunity uh, to worship together, to pray together, to study together. And God, we understand and realize that you are firmly in control. Now, God, bless everyone on this call, everyone who will be coming on the call, our entire church family, the community, uh, our city, our state, our leaders, our governors, uh, we pray, oh God, that you would put a, a loving arm of protection around them. God, now I ask that you would speak to this COVID-19, oh God, because you have all authority. Father, help us to learn what it is that you want us to learn during this global pandemic, that we may be better uh, servants of you. Now, God, we want to say that we love you. We bless you. It is in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us all say amen. 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 <clears throat> all right. If you would, people, if you would unmute yourselves just for a moment so I can hear your hellos and good mornings. Pastor loves to hear that. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. 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 <laughs> Good morning. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. Thank you all very much. Uh, we certainly appreciate it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So uh, I'm going to go over a couple of announcements. Uh, Good, morning. Good, morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, I'm going to go over a couple of announcements, uh, and then we will get on with the rest of our uh, service today. Uh, first of all, I want to, as always, give a big shout out to uh, our medical community, uh, our first responders, our EMT, everybody who was on that front line uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic. We just can't say enough how much we appreciate uh, you being in there every day, all day, taking care of uh, all of those patients. Continue to pray for those people as they are uh, really in danger each and every day. Uh, the backline workers, those who we don't think about, uh, the restaurant workers, the Walmart workers, uh, the waste management workers, let's continue to pray for them as well uh, because they are having to touch a lot of things like money, trash, things like that. So let's continue to lift them up uh, as well. Uh, I want to remind you, as I often do, to continue wearing your face masks. Uh, it is a govern, govern, government mandate, governor mandate at this time, uh, but I don't want us to lose sight of that because uh, although it may appear that the numbers are going down, uh, there are other variables that could be driving the numbers down. Uh, I'm no medical expert. Uh, but I do know that if you're not testing as many people, then you won't have as many positive tests. So, uh, although it may seem that the numbers could be down and I pray that, uh, the numbers really are going down, but let's make sure that we continue to do those things that we need to do. So continue wearing your face mask. Anytime you think about it, go and wash your hands. Uh, make sure that you lather for 20 seconds or more. Uh, and when you're leaving out of those public restrooms, use that paper towel for the door handle, uh, touch the door handle, uh, because you will basically be um, getting germs on your hands touching the door handle. So let's make sure we do that as well. Uh, there will be no Bible study this coming Wednesday. No Bible study this coming Wednesday. We will be having another food giveaway this Wednesday at the church, uh, beginning at five o'clock, uh, and we will pass out food until it's all gone. 
So this coming Wednesday, no Bible study, but we will be ministering at the church from five o'clock until passing out food boxes uh, and passing out face masks as well. Uh, so make sure that you share that information uh, with other people. I want to go ahead and give you the Sunday school lesson for this Wednesday for those who don't have Sunday school books. For those who don't have Sunday school books, I'm going to give you the lesson real quick. The topic, love versus bitterness. Love versus bitterness. The printed passage, Genesis, the 41st chapter. Verses 25 through 33, verses 37 through 40, verses 50 through 52. Again, that topic, love versus bitterness, printed passage, Genesis, the 41st chapter, verses 25 through 33, verses 37 through 40. And verses 50 through 52. The key verse, Genesis, the 41st chapter, verses 39 and verse 40. Genesis, the 41st chapter, verses 39 and 40 for the key verse. Uh, let's keep in mind again that uh, we will not be meeting for uh, Bible study this Wednesday at 6.30, uh, but we will, in fact, uh, be meeting at the church, passing out food boxes uh, from 5 uh, until. As you can see, the flyer is uh, should be on your screen now. You should be able to see the flyer uh, uh, for that handout, for that food giveaway. So make sure that you tell folks about uh, what we're doing this coming Wednesday uh, at 5 o'clock until it's all gone. Now, staying right there for just a second as you take in the flyer on the Family Food Boxes giveaway. As you stay right there for a second, I do want to uh, encourage um, volunteers for that day. Uh, Wednesday. We do need volunteers, so if you want to volunteer, I'm going to give you a couple of time slots uh, that we can use volunteers. And uh, if you would, if you'd like to volunteer, reach out to Sister Shante Cowles, reach out to Sister Tawana Smith, reach out to Sister Pat Smith, reach out to Sister Philandra Brewer or myself, uh, and let one of us know what time slot you will be volunteering so that we'll kind of know uh, uh, what we have and if we need to try to reach out and get some other people outside of our body. Um, so 8 o'clock a.m. 8 o'clock a.m. That is for loading the truck, loading the food boxes. Uh, just let us know if you can do that part and we will let you know exactly where to meet us Wednesday morning at 8 o'clock to load those boxes. Okay. Secondly, around 9.15 a.m., Maybe 10, we'll need somebody to meet us at the actual church to unload the truck, to put the food boxes in the church. So I would say that person would need to be at the church around 9, 15 a.m. that morning. Uh, we may make it there at 9, 15. We may make it there around 10. Uh, that truck unloading, depending on how many volunteers we have, could take about an hour. Uh, uh, so if you want to volunteer for that shift, let us know. And then the evening shift, the giveaway part of it, uh, that will be, uh, if you can make it there around 3.30, uh, no later than 4 on Wednesday evening for the box giveaway, let Tawana, let Pat, let Shante, let Sister Brewer, let myself know that you can make it to that. Uh, and that would be a blessing if you could do any of those shifts. So we are asking uh, of anybody who has the availability. Uh, and again, it does not have to be you. Uh, you could send your niece, your grandchild, your child, whoever. Just get them in contact with us to uh, assist us on passing these boxes out. All right. Um, 
I want to thank uh, all of those volunteers from uh, the last time we passed our food. It was an absolute blessing. Uh, and we're going to continue to try to do that. Uh, may not be every week, but uh, as the Lord sees fit, we will try to pass out food boxes to be a blessing to the community. Uh, certainly want to give a big shout out to uh, Sister Brewer for uh, all of her diligent work on this. And uh, I, I recall that when I was, uh, I believe at the time, Sister Brewer was teaching at uh, Oakley Detention Center in Raymond, Mississippi. You may have heard of that before. Uh, but she was teaching at Oakley Detention Center in Raymond, Mississippi. And at the same time, this was probably about 15 years ago. Uh, at the same time, I was teaching at S.B. Marshall up in Holmes County uh, before they consolidated all the schools. So needless to say, both myself and Sister Brewer had some pretty uh, challenging uh, students who were going through some poverty and some things of that nature. So... Uh, one of the things that we both implemented in our classrooms was just to encourage and empower these young people. We did something uh, called caught doing good because for all of their lives, they always got caught doing bad. Uh, so we would do something called caught doing good. So I took a picture of Sister Brewer. I caught her doing good and she didn't even realize I did it. Uh, and I want to share that picture with you guys because I'm so proud of her ministering. Uh, we were actually at the post office, and I'm just going to show it for just a second because I didn't get permission from this gentleman to show this picture. Uh, so I'm going to just show it for just a second. Just a second. Please, nobody screenshot it. <laughs> All right. Please, nobody screenshot it because it has a, a gentleman's face on there. Uh, but what you see there is, uh, you see Sister Brewer caught doing good. Uh, so what happened is we were at the post office and we actually happened to have some of the masks with us, uh, some of the giveaway masks. And she saw this homeless guy sitting outside and, um, uh, this picture is her walking away from him, but they had about a, a 15 minute conversation and she ministered to him. Uh, encouraged him. He was crying. She was crying. And uh, she gave him some masks. She gave him some um, uh, uh, gloves. Uh, and then she got him some lunch as well. She got him some lunch that day. So I just want to, uh, to give her her flowers while she's still here with us, uh, that that was truly a blessing to see her ministering in that fashion. It was off script. We weren't thinking about it. Uh, she just was caught doing good. So I encourage all of us uh, to uh, make sure that we get outside of those four walls and put that, uh, that ministry preparation that we've done for years and years and years and years inside of those walls. Let's make sure we do that outside of the wall. She was caught doing good. All right. So today we're going to have um, one of our members, uh, a very faithful member, Brother Tariq McGee. Uh, he's, he's a fleet technician uh, with FedEx Freight. So he's going to give us some insight uh, related to COVID-19 and how it has impacted and affected uh, his industry. So after we hear from uh, Tariq, uh, we're going to have a song from uh, Brother Reginald Black, who has been uh, gracious enough to bless us uh, a few times during this global pandemic. Uh, and uh, then we're going to have a word from the Lord and we will be ready. I want to encourage you to continue to pray uh, for all of us. Pray for the church ministry. I miss you all dearly and prayerfully we'll be back in the sanctuary uh, when God sees fit. I've heard some things about uh, some vaccinations and things of that sort. Uh, but just know myself and the deacons all of leadership, uh, we're going to make sure we wait until it's absolutely safe for us to enter into the sanctuary. So at this time, uh, Brother Tariq, I see you on the screen there. One second, Brother Tariq, we're just getting our camera in place. I am going to go ahead and spotlight Brother Tariq, though. Careful right there. Mm -hmm. 
about to spotlight him and take my video off so they won't be looking at us. Brother Tariq uh, McGee, the floor is yours, sir. Good morning, Pastor Brewer. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Sister Brewer. Good morning. Uh, good morning to everyone that is listening. Uh, as you know, my name is Tariq McGee. Uh, I am a diesel mechanic by trade. I work for FedEx Freight as a fleet maintenance technician. Uh, FedEx Freight is one of, the, of seven companies within the FedEx Corporation. They specialize in less than truck load LTL trucking. Uh, December of this year will be my eight year anniversary. I started my career with FedEx in West Memphis, Arkansas and spent two and a half years there. Once an opening was available at our Memphis terminal, I transferred and worked three and a half years before transferring to Jackson, Mississippi. Um, FedEx is an essential company because many businesses depend on their transport services. Mm -hmm. All team members at FedEx are considered essential workers. Uh, due to the COVID-19, uh, some cities had curfews and were basically shut down, but we were instructed to carry out, um, our, carry on our duties uh, by um, keeping our FedEx ID badge along with a company provided travel authorization letter. Uh, FedEx did implement a COVID-19 action plan for all employees to wear masks, practice social distancing, and wash hands frequently as possible. Uh, as a shop employee, the company provided masks, hand sanitizer, disinfectant spray for wiping down surfaces. Uh, they also stress the importance of, of getting plenty of rest, maintaining a healthy diet, maintaining your stress level, uh, stay home if you feel sick, and seek medical attention if you do feel sick. Uh, due to the nature of my work, keeping your distance is not always possible uh, because Another technician may need some assistance with repairing the equipment. Uh, we see a lot of trucks that uh, come from other locations and uh, we are responsible for maintaining those trucks. And so what I tend to do is uh, I like to wipe down the grab handles, uh, the steering wheel, um, any of the uh, dash control knobs, uh, anything that I have to you know, touch with my hand physically. Uh, and try to, uh, you know, uh, keep myself safe. Um, FedEx did uh, offer a voluntary leave of absence for those that wanted to. Uh, I don't work in operation, so I can't tell you if anyone was laid off, but my work never slowed down uh, during the pandemic. Uh, FedEx has a large fleet of trucks, trailers, uh, the converter bodies that you see uh, that connect connect those double trailers together and uh, they must be maintained and uh, so it's always plenty of work for us to do and basically we just try to you know just stay safe and uh, look out for one another uh, sometimes you do see people that will walk in, into the shop without their masks and I try to get away from them <laughs> or, or ask them know or let me put my mask uh, on you know and uh we are allowed to take our mask off if we're working in like a confined area where you know no one's around but i try to keep my mask on for the most part and that's basically all i have um you know because like i said i'm not in operation i can't really uh go into detail about what they do on the dock Amen. 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 God bless you, sir. Thank you for that insight. And we appreciate all the work that you're doing and continue to stay safe out there. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Okay. We certainly thank um, Brother Tariq for 
uh, that insight into uh, FedEx and being a fleet technician and some of the safety uh, protocol that he is doing uh, to make sure that he keeps not only himself safe, but the things that they're keeping uh, workers safe, all of his colleagues safe, as well as his uh, family at home safe. So again, uh, in terms of safety, folks, uh, what you're doing, none of it is too much. Uh, we have to continue to do these things so that we can continue to keep each other safe. So uh, thank you, Tariq, for doing your part to help keep us safe and to uh, get all of those packages delivered for us, keeping those trucks in tip-top shape. Uh, that is definitely, my friend, essential work. Amen. All right. Um, I want to uh, also remind you before Reginald Black comes and gives us a song, I want to remind you guys that uh, we do have a few people who are at the church uh, on uh, Sunday mornings. I believe they're there from about 9 until 12, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, people who are normally there. If you want to go by and drop off your tithes to the church, you may do so. Uh, or if uh, you want to mail those tithes in, uh, you can mail them to our P.O. Box, which is P.O. Box 1038, 1038 Florence, Mississippi 39073. Uh, and I must say that God is very proud of you guys for sending in your tithes and your offerings uh, since this global pandemic uh, hit our society and our world. Uh, God is truly pleased that you are still following his mandate uh, to bring forth a tithe. All right. So, Brother Reginald Black, are you there, sir? I'm here, Pastor. Good morning. Good morning, sir. The floor is yours. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Uh, it's just a simple song called Here I Am to Worship, and I love this song. All right. It's the light of the world. You step down into darkness. Open my eyes. Let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. Mm -hmm. And here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're altogether lovely, altogether worthy. All together wonderful to me. Here I am to worship. Right. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. Yeah, yeah. You're all together lovely. All together worthy. All together wonderful to me. And I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. And here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. All right. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. All right, Reggie. Yeah, boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. God bless you, son. God bless you. Got to know them. That's it. Okay. Amen. Amen. God bless you, son. God bless you. God bless uh, all of you all for being such a blessing uh, within our worship service and really uh, helping us out in a mighty, mighty special way. Uh, I'm going to ask that um, uh, that you would unmute yourselves for just a moment. Unmute yourself for just a moment and give uh, our speakers today, uh, uh, Brother Tariq McGee, uh, and our ministry and song person today, Brother Reggie Black, 
Uh, can you give those young men a big hand? Unmute yourself and give them a big hand. God bless you. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Just before we uh, give the text for today, I want to, uh, I did leave off one announcement that I wanted to share. Uh, you may have recalled uh, probably a, a couple of months ago uh, that I mentioned that the, the Zoom, the Zoom platform, they are requiring a little extra security uh, for the calls. So that extra layer of security is going to come in a form of a passcode. Uh, so basically what's going to happen is starting on next Sunday, being that we won't have Bible study this Wednesday, starting on next Sunday, you will still have the same Zoom uh, uh, meeting ID, which is that eight, six, whatever number. But once that ID goes in, it's going to ask you for a passcode. Uh, and that is just something Zoom is requiring to add an extra level of security. So when I send out the invite for this week, uh, for next Sunday, when I send that out, take notice that you will see a passcode that you will have to enter in. Hopefully and prayerfully, we'll be able to make it something uh, simple like our PO Box number 1038. Uh, but just make a note that beginning next Sunday, uh, You'll have to put in the regular meeting ID that you do now, and then you'll also have to put in a passcode extra as an extra uh, level of security. And of course, I'll remind you that of that throughout this coming week. Turn with me to Job, the 42nd chapter. Job, the 42nd chapter. Job, the 42nd chapter. And we're going to, uh, for your hearing, read verses 1 through 6. And then that, that A part of verse 12, 12A. Job, the 42nd chapter. Very familiar chapter. Verses 1 through 6. And then verse 12a, first part of verse 12. That's Job, the 42nd chapter, verses 1 through 6. And then verse 12a, as Job has gone through uh, quite a bit of struggle and conflict. But he's coming out on the better side of things, having grown, grown and really gone through these things. He really began to find what his true uh, purpose was in the Lord and the true reason why God allowed him to go through some of these struggles. And I believe that's something that uh, we ourselves have to personally identify. Uh, what is it that God is trying to get me to see in the midst uh, of this storm? Job, the 42nd chapter, 1 through 6, and then 12a. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Verse four, here I beseech thee and I will speak. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear. But Job says now, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. And then as we look over to verse number 12, the A part of it. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. May the Lord bless the reading, hearing, and especially the doing of his holy and divine word. From this 
passage of scriptures and certainly alluding to other passage of scriptures uh, and certainly focusing on uh, verse number 12. 12a, the verse says, so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. Hmm. This is the thought for this morning. There is much more in store. All right. There is much more. much more in store. My brothers and sisters, we have had a difficult plight. Yes, we have. As an African American person. Yes, we have. If we be honest with ourselves, we can truly trace some of our struggles of the 21st century. We can directly attach them or they directly correlate with some of our struggles back in the slavery days. Yes, they do. Uh, because of us always being inferior back then, in some cases we pass down an inferiority nature generation after generation. Yes, yeah, some have even said that we are hundreds and hundreds of years behind our counterparts simply because we were brought here unwillingly. Uh, and even when we got here and were declared free, we really were not free. Hmm. Uh, we've had some struggles as an African-American person. We've been kicked out. We've been thrown out. We've been hosed down. We've gone through some things. Yes. These things that we've gone through can surely, surely somewhat explain some of the mentality that we have now. Yes. Oftentimes, those of us who are trying to do better in life, we wonder sometimes, why are the other uh, black folks not trying to do better themselves? But listen, sometimes uh, it's not their fault. Sometimes it's a direct result of us passing down generational cycles from generation to generation. My brothers and sisters, if you look very closely at the Sunday school lessons over the next couple of weeks, you'll see that even Joseph had to break a cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, baby mama drama and all these things have been around for 2,000 or more years but Joseph had the fortitude, the insight, and the anointing to begin to break the cycle. Well, Pastor Brewer, what does breaking the cycle have to do with us getting much more? I came to tell you, my brothers and sisters, God has much more in store for you. My brothers and sisters, it's time out for us being content with just being content. Because I don't know about you, but I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. God has much more in store for you. God has a breakthrough in store for you. God has more grace and mercy in store for you. God wants you to be able to open that business. He has much more for you. God wants you to get that promotion at work. He has much more for you. Mm -hmm. God wants your family to be reconciled. He has much more for you. God wants your communities and your churches to stop fighting each other. He has much more for you. But an only way for us to realize that God has much more for us, we've got to begin to start looking at our own situation. Yes, my brothers and sisters, the one person that we will not confront about the troublesome things that are going on in our lives is the man in the mirror. And if I were at church, I would ask, do I have a witness right there? Oftentimes, we don't look at ourselves to see why am I not receiving the more that God wants me to have. Understand, my brothers and sisters, COVID-19 ain't got nothing on Jesus. <laughs> because God says that we are more than conquerors. That means that anything that I come up against, uh, God has already declared the victory. Yes, he has. 
And I don't know about you, but I, I think it's a good time in 2020 for us to start walking in the victory. Yes, but 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 we've got to do some things. There's some things um, on our part that we have to do to walk in that more uh, that God has in store for us. One practical thing that we can do, folks, we can go register to vote. Yeah. Yeah, some folks complain about President Trump and they complain about Governor Tate Reeves. Uh, but when you ask them, are they registered to vote? They begin to get null and void and don't say anything. In order for us to get the more in life, we have to be willing to give more. I want to challenge you while we are at home during this pandemic and not in the sanctuary every Sunday. I want you to begin to ask yourself, am I giving God all the devotion that he deserves? Am I giving God all the worship that he deserves? I, I'm not talking about Sunday morning. We got that down pat. Mm -hmm. But can you give God some praise uh, when you're sitting at home with nobody around? Can you give God a high five uh, when the chips are down? Can, can you give God a praise break uh, when nobody's watching? Because when you think about it, God has done so much for us. Yes, he has. But even with the so much, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> there's even more in store. The story of Job is well documented. He was a man that was faithful and upright to the Lord. He was above reproach. The Bible describes him as perfect. If you translate that word perfect, it just means he was upright and above reproach. Mm -hmm. He had cattle. He had land. He, he had children. Uh, he had all of these good things going for him. And you know the story that Satan asked the Lord, listen, you think Job is upright. Let me put my, let, let, let me put my, my voodoo on him. <laughs> Understand that sometimes God allows adversity to come in your life just to make you stronger than you were on yesterday. But Job is going through this adversity and his friends are trying to uh, uh, encourage him to curse God. His wife is telling him to curse God. They're telling him to throw in the towel. Job is going through all kind of stuff. And sometimes we feel like we're going through stuff just like Job. The car keeps breaking down. <laughs> the bill man wants his money. I'm having problems at the job. My family is running amok. And just when I thought that I can go to the church on Sunday morning to get a little bit of peace, they're raising hell all through the church. But Job understood at some point, particularly in this 42nd chapter, that God has much more in store for me. And I want to remind you, my brothers and my sisters, Stop being content with where you are right now. <laughs> you may have done well in life. You may have done some things that, that, that really pleases God. But God has much more in store for you. And understand that the much more may not be things that you are receiving. But it may be the way God is using you in ministry. You may have everything that you need. You, you may have a lot of your wants, but has God truly used you? Have you allowed God to use you to minister to somebody else? Right. Job, in this 42nd chapter, as we lead to our, our study for today, Job has had some back and forth with God and God had to really tell him in that 41st chapter that I've got all power in my hand. I am superior to everything. He had to remind Job of that, just like sometimes we need to be reminded that God is still in control. Job responds, and, and I believe Job's response here in these first six verses of 42 can remind us how we can attain that much more that God has in store for us. Right. Number one, number one, number one, we've got to remember that God is a sovereign God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, he's in control of everything. 
Look at Job's response here in verse twenty number two. I know, this is what Job says to God, that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholden from thee. So in other words, after all of this back and forth, after Job losing heart, having to hear from his friends, his wife has told him to curse God. Job has gone through some things, but now he comes back to himself and he simply says, I know that no thought can be withholden from you. I know you've got all power in your hand. I know you are in control. So I'm going to remember, God, that you are sovereign. <laughs> the Bible teaches us that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. Listen, I want to tell you that God is sovereign and we are have to remember that God is in complete control. He's sovereign, ladies and gentlemen. Where you are right now, God can work it out for your good. I don't care how bad the situation looks. Mm -hmm. God is sovereign. That's why ultimately as believers, we have to know and understand that God is working it out right now within COVID-19. But while we're going through the storm, let's not just go through it, but let's learn something while we're in the storm. Amen. <laughs> have you gotten closer to God in the storm? Have you found some things out about yourself in the storm? Have you committed to a devotional plan in the storm? Have you said to yourself, I can do things better in my life in the storm? Number one, folks, if we truly, if we truly want to walk in the more that God has in store for us, number one, we got to remember that God is sovereign. Not only did Job have an epiphany, a wake up moment, coming to Jesus moment to realize God is sovereign. Secondly, you got to remember that you can't know everything. All right. <laughs> like, I, I didn't make it up. Look at verse three. Job said, who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? And as a matter of fact, Job is truly just reflecting back on what God has already challenged him on. In the previous chapter, God has said, listen, Job, who do you think I am? So Job says in verse three, therefore, have I uttered, watch this, that I understood not. Mm. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Translation, remember that you can't know everything. Listen, because God is sovereign. Because we can't handle God giving us everything all at one time, we must understand that we don't always understand. But you know how we are when God puts something in our life, he's lining things up. If he doesn't give it all to us at one time, we use that age old phrase. I can't see it happening. I can't see us doing that. I can't see God giving me that, that job, that director's position. I can't see God doing that for, but let me tell you folks, because God is sovereign. Secondly, you can't know everything. God will reveal things to us as we mature in his word. Some things we can't handle yet because we're not deep enough in his word. If he gave it to us right now, it would blow our minds. You want God to give you more and more? You want him to give you more and more than I challenge you to know that you can't know everything. I don't care if you're 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. God still has some stuff that he wants to reveal to you. Mm -hmm. First, remember that God is sovereign. Secondly, you got to remember that you can't know everything. And then Job comes down in verse four through six. We got to remember, this is an important one right here because we don't want to do this one. We got to remember to turn from our wicked ways. Mm. <laughs> hey, 
Verse 4, Job says, I beseech thee and I will speak. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. Job again is reflecting back on previous chapters or previous times when God has simply told him that Job, I'm in control. Mm -hmm. So now that Job is recalling this, he's bringing it back to his remembrance. Job answers the question himself in verse five. He says, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but watch this, but now mine eye seeth thee. Okay, Job, now that you see what God is doing in your life, now that you see what he's putting in place for you, what are you going to do about it, Job, in verse 6? Wherefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Mm -hmm. Woo! When Job began to learn better, mm -hmm. he began to do better. He regurgitated what no some previous either. conversation that God had had with him in verse four and five. And then he says in verse six, I am disgusted with myself. That's what a board says in verse six. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. I'm disgusted with myself and I want to turn from my evil ways. I want to repent. Folks, listen, enough of us aren't disgusted with some of our behavior. Mm -hmm. Hey, some of us need to get disgusted with the way we treat the Lord. That's right. Some of us need to get disgusted with ourselves, how we treat our brothers and our sisters. Mm -hmm. Some of us need to get disgusted with how we treat God's ministry. Mm -hmm. Job said in order to, in order to walk in that much more. We got to remember to turn from our wicked ways. That's what the chronicler said in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. My people, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. We got to pray too. God said, then, hallelujah, then will I hear from him. Heal the land. Our land cannot be healed until we turn from our wicked ways. Number one, we got to remember that God is sovereign. Number two, if you want to walk in the much more that God has for you, you got to remember that you cannot know everything. I know you've done it like that for a hundred years, but God can do it better than we ever did. Number three, we got to remember to turn from our wicked ways. And then lastly, as Job has reflected upon the fact that God is all powerful, all knowing, as he reflected upon the fact that he understands nothing, as he's reflected upon the fact that in order for me to get my stuff back, I got to turn from my wicked ways. The final verse, verse 12. After Job realized all this, this is the last thing. We got to remember that God desires to give us more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. Look at 12a. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. <laughs> Listen, we've all messed up. Many, many times. We all have fickle and finite minds. They're frail. Yes. And sometimes frigid. Yes. But your end can be better than your beginning. Amen. You can repent right now that God, I have not done things that are pleasing to you. Yes. <laughs> God, I feel like I've done some good things, but I feel like I, I've done some bad things as well. Guess what? You're human. Right. <laughs> All have sinned right. and come That's to the true. glory of God. Right. He think he got right. He think he don't sin. He think he don't need to repent. Yes, I do. That's right. Yes, I do. But the difference between that person and the repentant person is the repentant person is confessing to God All right. that I don't have it together. 
That's right. I may have talked to that person badly. God, I, I want to turn from those ways. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Verse 12. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. You know what? That tells me that God is not giving up on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's not giving up on you. He blessed his end more than the beginning. If you look on the rest of verse 12, he gave him 14,000 sheep. That's double than what Job had. He gave him 6,000 camels. That's double. He gave him a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand she asses. That's double what Job had. So because Job repented, he gave him more whew, than he had in the beginning. If I was at church right now, I'd say more. I'll have you to say more, more. than more, you had in the more, beginning. More, more. And listen, in verse 13, he gave him seven sons and three daughters. And somebody said, well, that's what he had in the beginning. But yeah, but he got seven sons and three daughters waiting on him in glory. Mm. So he still doubled. <laughs> hey! His sons and daughters as well. Yes. It's just seven of them waiting on him on the other side. And seven are still here with him now. Listen, I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you that there is much more in store for you. I know you've been doing it a long way at work doing it a, a, a certain way at work for a long time, but I want to tell you, God has more for you. Mm. I know you've been doing it in your family a certain way for a long time, but I want to tell you, God has much more for you. I know you've been doing certain things in the community that probably have been pretty good, but God has much more for you. But you've got to be willing to turn from those ways. And you may say to yourself, I don't think I'm doing one thing wicked. It's not for you to determine. It's for God to determine. Mm. So ask God in your daily prayer. God, if you see anything that I can do better, I'm sorry. And I want you to make me over again. I want you to help me to be better tomorrow than I was today. Make me over again. God has much more in store. If you're willing to understand that you don't know everything, if you're willing to submit that God is sovereign, if you're willing to turn from your wicked ways, and if you're willing to have the mindset that God wants to give you more. Yeah, we... We're fighting against that mindset of, of, of being inferior because we were once slaves. Hmm. But God wants to give you more. God bless you and God keep you. If there is anybody on the call today who does not know the Lord as their personal Savior, the Apostle Paul tells us to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. Oh, you won't have it all together right away. None of us have it all together 50 years later. Mm -hmm. But you will be a part of his family. You would have a right relationship with them. If that's you on this call today or if you know anybody, get them in contact with me. And I will share the plan of salvation with them. And I will share with them that God can save your life right now. I want to tell you that I love you. God loves you. God bless you and God keep you. Reminders again that we will not have Bible study this Wednesday for next Sunday's worship. Remember that there will be an extra level of security for our Zoom call. I will give you the passcode uh, via text. Uh, make sure if there's somebody who may not have been on this morning that you let them know that next Sunday there will be an extra level of security. We will not be having Bible study, but we will be ministering at the church at 5 o'clock. Come by and get your food box. Come by and get your face mask Wednesday at the church. We are soliciting volunteers from our Morningstar family. Uh, if you are available 8 o'clock in the morning, 
please let one of those people I called out earlier know that you can come and help. Sister Philandra Brewer, Sister Tawana Smith, Sister Pat Smith, Sister Shante Cowles, let them know that I will be there eight o'clock that morning or I'm sending my niece, I'm sending my nephew, I'm sending my grandchild uh, eight o'clock that morning and we will let you know where to meet us to load the trucks. We will then be driving over to the church around 9.15, uh, uh, no later than 10, I presume, to unload the truck. So if you want to volunteer for that time slot, please do so. Then we will be back at the church around 3.15, 3.30 uh, to prepare to pass out meals that Wednesday evening. Uh, I want to tell you that God loves you uh, and we love you too. Uh, make sure that somewhere this week that you ask God to make you over again so that you may walk in your more. Let us bow. Father, we are thankful for the opportunity to be in your presence once again. We thank you, God, for all of your many blessings that we have received and those that are to come. God, we are so thankful that you are a sovereign God. You're all-knowing God. You're omniscient. You're all-powerful God. You're omnipotent. You're everywhere at the same time. You're omnipresent. Now, God, we pray, oh God, that you would give all of us a fresh anointing that we may have the courage to understand that we won't always understand. But for us to yield to your word and your way. God, open our vessels up that we may receive more and more for you. Some of us, God, our cups are too full, but God, we know that you can make room to put even more knowledge and anointing in our cups. Father, we want more. Just like Job, God, we are ready for our more. I want to say that we love you, God. We bless you and we cannot make it without you. And now unto him that is able to keep us from falling in the presence of his glory. To the only wise God, our Father, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Let us all agree by saying amen. 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 And amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. You may unmute yourself and speak to your church mates. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy it. All right.